Up to now, we've been discussing your individual demand for fried chicken pieces. We've identified a number of factors that influence this demand of yours, namely tastes, income, price of a fried chicken piece, number of potential buyers, and the price of related products. We also looked at the law of demand by considering the impact of changes in the price of fried chicken pieces on the quantity demanded. As an individual household, you are one of the most important building blocks of economic theory. And from the behavior of an individual household, much can be learned. However, the suppliers of fried chicken pieces are not only interested in the demand of one particular individual or household, but in the demand of all the potential buyers of its product. This is the so-called market demand. It is this market demand that plays an important role in establishing the market price for a good or service. How do we get from individual demand to market demand? Well, it's pretty simple really. If we know what all the individual's demands are and we add them up, that gives us our market demand. Let's say that apart from your demand for fried chicken, we also know how much the Kamalo and the Fenter families would consume at any given price. We can then organize this information into a new table, and by adding the individual quantities of each household, we can work out the market demand at each price. At a price of 7 Rand, the market demand would be 2 pieces for the students, plus 4 pieces for the Kamalo family, plus 6 pieces for the Fenters, so the market demand at 7 Rand is 12 pieces. And if we do this for the rest of the table, we've worked out the market demand at the other prices. So now, you must use this information to draw the market demand curve for fried chicken pieces. So at a price of 7 Rand, we see that the total quantity demanded is 12 pieces. At 6 Rand, it's 18 pieces, then 5 Rand, 24 pieces, then 30, 36, 42, and finally, at 1 Rand, 48 pieces. Joining all these points together gives us our market demand curve. Looking at the market demand curve, you'll see that it has the same properties as the individual demand curve. It's downward sloping, indicating a negative or inverse relationship between the price and the quantity demanded. A downward movement along the curve takes place if the price falls. And an upward movement along the curve takes place if the price rises. And again, we can examine the impact of the price on the quantity demanded by ignoring other factors for the time being, or by applying the ceteris paribus condition. Namely, that all the other forces or factors remain constant or unchanged.